Good morning. All right. This game did not start the way we all wanted to start. Um, at all three parts of our of our team, um, when you take a look at it, offense goes out. Man, we stall on offense. Um, special team comes out. We don't execute a fake. Defense comes out. Man, we give up a 34-yard run for a touchdown. Um, so definitely not the start that we wanted. But, man, I'll tell you what, you talking about a resilient team. you talking about a team that plays with effort. you talk about a team that can recalibrate and get their focus on the task at hand. Our men actually did that at all three levels, all three parts of our team. Um, offense did a really good job of some critical drives um, to get 21 points uh, before the half. I mean, our defense did a really good job of making some key stops um, and creating a turnover uh, again um, to put the offense in positions. And man, in, in two really critical, critical parts of that game that you know people really don't talk about, but for us as a team, uh, we look at those, those uh, and we actually talk to our players about it, how critical they were, was um, on the fumble return those guys had, man, our guys go out and um, we execute a two-point uh, play uh, as far as defensively um, to not let them make it. You know, and that was a critical, critical play. And then we go on a four-minute drive and we get a three and out. Um, get a ball back to our offense. Our offense marched the ball down the field, man, and kicked that field goal to win the game. Uh, those are the two critical, three critical parts in that game. And I thought that um, our guys acknowledged, we acknowledged to our guys how critical that was. And that just goes to show, man, every situation that comes up in these games, our guys are ready for it. They don't blink. Um, and that's a credit to our head coach because we go through those things are always during the week. So, um, and a credit to our players because they execute at a high level. <clears throat> so going on to this week, um, listen, this is an opponent. In this league, records doesn't matter. You can get your ass kicked at any given time. Um, and we understand that because we were in Tennessee's shoes before. We were that team that we were off for of blood every week. I know this team feels the same way. Um, listen, they have names. They have players. They have high draft picks that want to come out and, um, and establish dominance. But we have to do a really good job of just understanding what the task is at hand. Um, records doesn't matter. We just have a opponent in front of us that we got to beat to get onto the next level that we want to we get to. And our guys understand that. So um, that's our mindset. We look forward to the challenge. It's going to be a challenge. Um, and we're going to have a good week of practice and be ready for it. You have a two-point play. Um, when they motioned kind of to that bunch on, on the left side, you saw Branch and um, TA kind of yeah. communicate it and, and signal to each other. Is that just kind of a, an example of kind of how those young guys are settling in, starting to communicate and, and really making plays at, at crucial points? Well, when you really dive into that play, it was actually more than that because Kirby was part of it too. If you saw him getting ready to move, um, because you, it, offensive teams are doing this a lot. You, Kansas City did it twice in their Super Bowl wins as far as these quick motions. And you just have one guy on them. We usually have two guys so we can have anchor points on both sides. So Kirby was involved in it also. Um, man, but for all three of those guys to have the, um, the mentality and the understanding of what we're trying to create and to be able to pass things off, it does show the growth of those players. And here's the, the scary part about it is, man, they still have a long way to go. And, um, and they're working at it every day. So uh, I'm excited about the go forward with those guys. Um, again, they know they still have work to do, but, you know, you're proud of the fact that they can communicate at a high level and quickly to be able to get a, get a job done. There are some of the things offenses are doing. One thing I've noticed a lot more this year is that real short motion where yeah. guys are just switching spots on the one side of the line right before the snap. What are, what are offenses trying to accomplish there and you know what are the, the challenges of I guess that little I don't what, what do you call that motion well listen everybody has their own reasons why um, sometimes you get man zone tail sometimes you're starting to get spacing throughout the defense sometimes you're trying to get matchups so um, I can't tell you exactly exactly why each team do it but I know the mindset of why teams do it and those three things are part of it so now, we just have to do a good job of understanding where we're at, where our man is, especially if you're in man coverage. And zones, understanding, man, they're creating space that we make sure we got to condense that space as much as possible. I think Brian said that pick was partly due to, like, really good 
disguising coverage, maybe the same thing you can see it, you know. Um, what is the key to that for you guys? Like, are, do you feel like your players are better at that? And you so like, is there something that they... Well, it's understanding. Number one is film study, too, of understanding what teams are trying to do when you show a certain look. Uh, so those guys, those guys did a really good job of showing a single high look, and usually that team went to a certain play, all right, that um, that we looked at. And those guys did a really good job of forcing that play to happen, and we was in a totally different defense. And Brown was in a half, Curry was in a half, and, man, he ended up throwing the ball to, to Brown, and Brown made a good play on it. They are, and that's something that we've um, that I've said every week. Those guys are doing a better job of understanding exactly how they have to operate in the back end, and the communication part to me is probably the most important part. Those guys are doing a good job of. Tell us about having trust in your safeties to, to freelance a little bit when they um, you know, don't they say know freelance. <laughs> I, I, I think that term is used. Nah, I got you. Yeah, but like you know, just the, the creativity to to operate within the scheme when they're doing you know at least getting their job done. Yeah. How much of that where their disguising stuff is is coached by you or you know them communicating and, and figuring out a way to to get it done listen that goes hand in hand um because you coach a concept and when you coach a concept the guys start understanding like what are those strong points and what are the weaknesses when you coach that concept and then when you add that to film study those guys start saying man if we do this on tape all right, this is what teams are showing them on tape. This is what teams are checking to. Then maybe we do that, we can show something different and be able to make plays. So it goes hand in hand with coaching, then also execution and understanding of those guys. And to me, that's what you do as, a, as an NFL player. You start to grow and you start to figure those things out. So listen, it's, it's never one sided. It's never all coaching and it's never all players, you know. So um, that's why this is the ultimate team game. You know, coaches are a huge part of it. Players are a huge part of it. When you match those two together, man, it's something special. Could you assess Delvin Express's belief in Malcolm Rodriguez really being a starting caliber linebacker? Where yeah. have you seen his growth um, in the defense and in your scheme? Listen, I've said that from the beginning. And listen, that room is a special room. And we have a number of guys in there that – um, that can start for us. We have a number of guys in there that play on all special teams and come and play on, with us on defense. Um, and my philosophy is when you have good players, you try to get them on the field as much as possible. So um, Rodrigo is a guy that we try to get on the field as much as possible. So anytime we have injuries, in that, especially in that room, okay, let's go to the next man. We know that man can do the job. So um, excited about his growth. Um, he's still a young player, still have a ways to go. Um, but man, listen, I have no, um, no issues with playing that player as a starter, backup. But in some way, shape, or form, he's going to be on the field for us because he's a good player. Obviously, you played this game without Hutch. Would you assess your D-line and how you played and how you generated pressure? Listen, we talked about this last week. Um, players are what makes your team. And you put those players in positions to be successful as much as you, as you can. Um, Hutch was a guy that can generate pressure in games or by himself. Um, but obviously Hutch is not here. Now you look at each player that we have, you try to do the same thing with each of those players. So um, my job is to make sure I put a game plan together, looking at the players and make sure it's player-centric to every time that they go out there and play, man, we'll put them in the best position. That can either be putting guys in situations where they're running games, um, putting guys out on the edge to where they can try to win one-on-one, um, and just in just totality, man, just, man, how do we create this defense to where these guys can go play and go play fast? Um, and that's what I try to do every week. And listen, I know that, that, that Hutch brought a huge, uh, huge part of rushing the passer. But, man, we have, again, we have other guys that can go out there and do the same thing. So, listen, I, 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 they Hutch? No, they're not. They're not. And it's hard to be Hutch. But they have their own talents and, and traits that we can try to utilize to help us win. Blitz rate ended up being you know, on your hearing, but is that sustainable? Like blitzing that much for you? Does that change by opponent? Does that I don't know? How do you? I like to blitz anyway, so it's 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 really by game plan, um, and it's by the players that you have. And going back to our linebackers, I mean, I, I want to blitz those guys as much as possible because I think it's hard for a running back to actually block those guys. You got Jack, he's a 6'4", 250-pound man on the running back. Man, I'm going to take that matchup all the time. Same thing with Alex. You have a 6'3", 240-pound man on the back. I'm going to take that matchup all the time. So it's not the fact that um, 
I mean, we're just trying to blitz to, to, to recoup what Hutch didn't give us. It's the game plan that we're trying to make sure we take advantage of. Um, but at the end of the day, I like the blitz, so. <laughs> you talked about, you've talked about this. Um, every, every team has these, these receivers now, but you guys yeah. have played an absolute gauntlet. You played two of the best in your last two games, and CD and Jefferson, you kept both under 100 yards. Yeah. You know, going back to last year, I know last year was last year, but, you know, there were some, some struggles there in containing the number one options for, yep. for teams. Um, you know, how, how much of that was an emphasis for you from year to year, and, and how pleased have you been with the job of, you know, con containing, controlling opponents' number one options this season? Listen, I, I told our guys this, um, and I've been telling them this for a while, actually, is um, the way that they go out and the way they challenge guys, they get in guys' face, they put their hands on guys, that's – the way that's the vision of playing smothering defense, um, and they'll go, those guys create that picture, you know, because I paint that picture for them, and they know that's what I require when it comes to playing defense in general. Is I want to smother people as much as possible. Um, CD does a really good job of that. I mean, he's a six-one, two hundred pound man with long arms. Same thing with TA. Um, Meeks on a small end, but I tell you what, he is feisty, he is scrappy, he is highly competitive. Um, and all our guys have that same trait about themselves. So when you have guys that's like that, man, you want to put them in situations where they're able to do what they do best, and that's go play man coverage. So that's a huge part of what we do. Now, listen, we're going to double those guys too. I mean, these receivers in this league are – they're elite, elite athletes, and it's hard to just contain them with one guy. So there's going to be times when we double them, but there's going to be times where they're going to be by themselves. So, um, man, our guys have been doing a really good job of executing the plan and going out there and challenging and not being afraid to challenge and understand, listen, if you beat me, I'm going to line up again, get in his face, and we're going to go at it again. And those guys have been doing a good job of that. How familiar are you with Brian Callahan and, and the offense that he brought over from Cincinnati? Well, listen, I, um, I understand the, uh, uh, the Cincinnati offense um, fairly well. I think he's put his own stamp on what he wants to do. Um, Listen, I, I totally understand exactly where that team is. Because, again, I mean, we were Tennessee when we first got here. All right? So it's going to take those guys uh, some time to get to exactly where they want it. You know, I don't know, you know, if they got the personnel they want. You know, but the thing is, I know they're going to coach hard. You know, I know Denard really well. And I know he's going to coach his ass off and get those guys to play at a certain level. Now, um, all the offensive coaches, I don't know them that well. But I do know uh, where he came from. You know, and I know how they played uh, offensive football, and they've been highly successful in Cincinnati on offense. So I'm sure he's trying to recreate that. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, you told us not to crown Trevor Nowoski too, too early, but I'm kind of curious <coughs> to your thoughts on how he's responded to an increased role over the past two weeks. We're still not going to crown him just yet. <laughs> no, but I would say this. He's improving as a player. Um, that Sam position is not an easy position. It's not for everybody. Um, Listen, it's a reason why we wanted him back, because we knew what he brought to the table. So um, he's going to continue to to grow. He's going to continue to grow in our system. Um, and I like what he's doing for us. And again, listen, we're going to try to put as much on, on his plate as he can handle, um, but we're not going to overwhelm the player, because he is a young player still. But he's doing some good things. Um, what he's two for two is for sex, right? That's why you want to make him Lawrence Taylor, I know. But it's all good. It's all good. Just because a couple guys brought it up this week, uh -oh. the, the Hail Mary defense, um, seven resulting in six sacks. Is that <laughs> that correct? I mean, what, why is that, you know, is that a play you think about a lot? Because it's the, the important Well, it doesn't thing. happen a lot. But the thing is, um, and again, this is to our players and also to our head coach, that we, um, we talk about situational football all the time. And I think you have to prepare guys for, situa for any situation that come up. Um, and sometimes they don't come up. But the thing is, our guys understand the situation, and when it's time for Hail Mary, we have certain plays that we're going to run against Hail Marys, and our guys, you know, they go out there and execute. And when you do that at a high level, usually good things happen. And Trevor was the guy that actually had a chance to get the sack on it, so good for him. All right. Okay, how we doing? Great, great, great. and for him to get, you know, NFC Special Teams Player of the Week and the recognition and everything that comes with that. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's really great for all those guys. Um, I think when you get into coaching, 
or at least certainly the more the longer I've been in it, the more really you do it to watch stuff like that happen to the players that you coach, man. You want to see them have success. You want to see them um, play well. You want to see them make big plays. And uh, so for me personally, obviously being able to be a part and watching them do that is, is fun. It's fun to see. I mean, that's kind of why you do it. So it was good. Yeah, we had some pressure on a punt. Um, just, yeah, simple little things, but yeah. I don't know if it was something that you guys did or were they just really good rushing in? They rush hard um, traditionally, and they did a good job of it. Um, yeah, I mean, the field goal, uh, the field goal, I didn't think they were actually really that close on. Um, but the guy did try to jump over the top of us and all that. You saw that. Um, so, yeah. That was the first time I think we've seen Hogan kind of pinned in the, the way we talked about um, last, mm -hmm. last week. What, what is the coaching counter to that? How do you prevent your long snapper from being pushed to the ground. Yeah, I think, uh, truth be told, I felt like our execution on the play was pretty good. Um, it put pressure on those guys to really what they call leverage or push off the back of the guy, which is illegal. Um, and so the guy kind of had to use us to elevate over the top. Um, so that would... Um, and then when you have to elevate that high, like you saw on that play, whether you leverage or not, if you did it legally and didn't leverage, then you would be jumping over the top. It takes so long to get up over the top that by the time you come down, you can't re-elevate. And in order to block it, you gotta re-elevate um, on the play. And I think you saw that, even though the guy was pushing on us to get over the top, he still didn't have enough time to re-elevate. So at some point, if you wanna get over the top, you could probably get over the top, but can you do it fast enough? And that's really what that play comes down to. I think the key for that thing is pad level. If you're real, real low, then you can get over the top and re-elevate um, afterwards. And that's really didn't happen for us. Um, so anyway, they tried, but yeah. Jake uh, did a little dance after he made the field goal. <laughs> Have you seen him come out of his shell at all over the last couple months? Well. Um, you know, I think it's just like any player. I mean, he's really focused on trying to do his job. He's got a huge job. It's a very difficult one. Um, and there's a lot of pressure in that position. And so I think for him, a lot of him is just being ultra focused. And I don't think it's really that he's not having a good time or not having fun. Um, but one thing I really respect about him is that he has a, an ability to really lock himself in. I mean, on game day, you don't even need to talk to him um, because he's taking care of it himself already. I mean, he is super focused. But um, so you don't see him smile and do all that stuff a lot. And like I said, I don't think it's because he's not having a good time, but he just knows what comes with the position. And you got you to gotta take one kick out of the time. And it's really the same thing going forward. I mean, that play's over and he's already on to the next one. And uh, the next one's going to take everything he's got. And I think he knows that. Um, but it was definitely good in the moment to see him enjoy it and have some fun. And I think uh, he's definitely getting more comfortable with his teammates. And I think, you know, in this game, the bottom line is all your teammates care is if you can play. Um, and if you play and you play at a high level and you play well and you help them be successful, then they all love you, you know. So um, the better he plays, obviously, the more of those guys are going to embrace him short touchbacks how they start at the 20 on the kickoff i guess is that something that he's been working on is that intentional i guess yeah so i mean we we really came off the dallas game and i, I sat in here a couple weeks ago or a week ago and said <clears throat> you know we didn't really cover those kicks well enough and and a lot of it was on me and i, I really believe this my whole life but it couldn't be more true in that situation I think in life, man, you got to play on the attack. Um, and you got to know what's out there and what you want, and you got to go get it. Um, and that's really how it, there's a lot of people who, okay, I'll just do this and see what comes my way. And that's really no way to live your life. <laughs> um, and we were kind of playing that way on kickoff. We were playing conservative. We knew that the we know that the play is volatile. We saw that in the Cleveland uh, Cincinnati game, the opening kickoff, you know. Uh, Cincinnati scored a touchdown on it. It's a volatile play, um, and there's no way around it. But 
just kind of hoping that it doesn't happen to you or whatever is probably not a great approach. And we had a little bit of that, and that's really my fault. So we decided going into this game, hey, we're going we're gonna to approach this different. We're going to play on the attack. We're going to be aggressive. And I think what happens when you play that way, it doesn't always work out. It's like the fake punt. It didn't work out. But I think what happens on that is once you start dictating the tempo and the terms, then you force your opponent to play a little bit different, and you got them on their heels. And I think that was kind of in the, going into that game was more of our approach is, hey, man, we're going to play to win. We're going to play on the attack. We're going to take what we want to go get, and we're going to go out there and take it. And uh, those guys did a great job executing that. And when you empower them, they really come to life, and I think you can see that. Successfully execute so many fake punts. This one didn't work out. How much of that was um, a, a bad idea of the look, or just um, you know poor execution up front? Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I think what you hope is that when you're a coach, you hope you stand up here and you say it was my fault. You know, like we didn't execute it well enough and we didn't get the play done. Um, I think if you're a player, you you think like, man, there's a few little things I could have done differently. Um, so there, there's a lot to it. We like to look. Um, we felt good about it. I still feel good about it. I know we could get it uh, if we got that look again. Um, I think the hardest thing on the play is you don't know exactly what look you're going to get necessarily. And it could be just a little bit different. And if it's a little bit different, you may block it just a little bit different. And there's a lot of that stuff that goes on on the fly, and we've been really good about, you know, still getting it done no matter what we've gotten, even if it wasn't exactly the way we practice it. Um, and that one was very close, but a little bit different in ways, and you could see why guys thought what they thought. And I'm not blaming it on our players at all. I mean, it's, it's tough. and. I think when you call those plays, you know that there's an element of risk. I mean, if we get every one of them, we'd never punt, uh, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but um, so you know that there's an element of risk. And, and but I also think that it's just like I was saying, it, it ends up paying you back. You know, the guys who swing the bat, man, it ends up coming back to them. The, the entrepreneurs out there who go for it, man, they come up with some crazy idea and they let it rip and it doesn't always work out, but those guys are never discouraged. And that probably leads into something else that ends up being great for them. Um, and for us with the fakes, like we end up having a huge net. Our uh, Dorsey ends up being singled. The last punt of the game was a huge punt. We net 58 yards in a critical situation in the game and flipped the whole field. Our defense, I think it was three and out. They punt the ball back. We drive the ball down and kick the field goal and win the game. Um, on that punt, we netted 58 yards. Dorsey singled up. They're playing soft on him on the outside because they got to take away the throw. They got to take away the run. And now we get a chance to run down there and play fast. And so really, like, it pays us back in a lot of different ways, even if ultimately the one play is not successful. So there's a lot to those plays um, that not everybody sees. I would love for them to work every time. Let me ask about Dorsey, because it seems like every Monday Dan's coming in here, you know, going over the players that shine, and he's one of them that maybe he's overlooked because of what he does. I know you talked a couple weeks ago about speed being such a key part. What else does he do so well that makes him, you know, great? Yeah, um, he definitely has great speed. I, I think more importantly than that, if you're not competitive, then it's going to be hard for you. You can be fast, and if you don't want to compete and go out there and win and have a certain level of pride uh, in your game and the way you play and a certain standard for yourself, and he is ultra competitive, has a super high standard for himself. He always wants more and to play better. Um, and then you couple that with his speed and athleticism, quickness, um, his ability to react. Um, I mean, he's a special player. Kickoff strategy now that you sort of punch your mojo, get your mojo back on that. Is that? Here to stay, yeah, I would see us. I would see definitely that being a part of us going forward. I'm not saying it's going to be every kick. Um, I would never make any promises, but uh, no, I definitely see that being a part of us. To your point earlier, you asked like four weeks ago something about, well, you, you know, you're going to have to play outdoors anyway. I mean, we're going to have to cover some at some point anyway. You know what I mean? So. It was 44 yards. Um, there was a couple of knees taken before that. Was there something specific about that range that you were comfortable as opposed to, you know, run another offensive play trying to get it closer? 
Well, I would say in general terms, you would you will hear me always say, and Coach Campbell will always hear me say, closer is always better than further away. Um, and I say that only because the odds go up the closer you are and the odds go down the further back you are. Um, so in general terms, closer is always better. I felt very comfortable with where we were on the field. I mean, obviously, Jake's got plenty of leg for that. And the truth is, sometimes he's better from further than he is tighter. Um, it's a little bit straighter kick. There's a little bit less aiming. The closer you get up, if you're on a hash, the closer you get up to the uprights, the more of an angle is on the kick. So it's a little bit straighter from further back. Um, and he's got a big leg, so it kind of allows him just to sw swing straight through the ball a little bit. Um, so anyway, the truth is he's, you know, just as good for the most part from a little bit further back up to some point. Um, a lot of these kickers fall off where when I first got in this business, it was like the mid 40s. Well, now it's like upper 40s or 50, you know, where they're starting to fall off. But the number kind of their percentage kind of just slowly decreases in more of a linear fashion. And then the further up you get, the steeper it drops off. Um, so anyway, I felt great with them. I wasn't worried about a couple yards. Coach asked me about the hash, right or left. It didn't matter to me. Um, so we felt we felt really good about it. Okay, man. Hello. All right. Um, listen, it was a great game last week, man. We found out a lot about our guys getting down uh, like we did, ten to nothing early in that game, and didn't start the way we wanted to. Uh, Three, three and outs, not the formula for success for us, but guys stuck with it. Uh, we really just shot ourselves in the foot there early on, whether it was penalties or sacks. And, uh, but once we started rolling, I mean, you could, see, you could see where they executed the plan really well and they were, they were playing hard for each other, just like we, we do each and every week. So that was fun to see. Um, some guys played probably the best, best ball of their season so far. Frank's one of those guys. Um, Jameer certainly had a big game for us, thought Leaf came through for us in one of those drives where he, he made several big plays to extend the drive for us on third down in particular. And so uh, awesome to see, awesome to see some guys step up. Hard environment to play in. I mean, I think Jared and Frank both said that was one of the loudest, loudest games that they've ever been a part of. So communication was a major issue and um, we got to be cleaner in terms of the penalties. We can't allow that to be a crutch moving forward. And uh, you know, great week this week in terms of the challenge. Tennessee is is a is a very good defense. I think Coach already alluded to might be the best we've seen all year. Um, maybe not as challenging from a schematic standpoint, but personnel wise, these guys are across the board at each level. Uh, sound. They are violent. They're physical. They finish. And uh, when you see a team that plays as much too high as they do, and yet still be able to shut down every run game that they face it we already know that that uh, we have our work cut out for us so i'll open up from there dan and, and jared have kind of downplayed this four game stretch that that he's having but the numbers speak for themselves i mean he's doing things that no quarterback in this league have ever done in terms of passer rating completion percentage over four games can you maybe contextualize it uh in, in how he's executing your offense to this degree yeah it's it's our offense i mean it's it that's been uh from day one it's been he has been involved with this it's been a collaborative effort with him and the rest of the coaching staff and i think he's taken a lot of ownership um we make a big deal each and every week why each play is in uh what what the premier look is if we don't get that look what we need to do with the football um and then i think the weapons around us right now are are really just they're opening up the entire field so um, we've hit some big plays over the top and and guys have backed off and so he uh, Jared's been very good at staying consistent to if they get depth let's check it down and then the guys underneath are explosive runners after the catch so whether it's Saint whether it's our backs um, those guys have on checkdowns gotten explosive plays almost each and every week so um, he has just stayed true to what the play calls for and and we've been able to find open receivers and it's, it's been a good thing so far none of us are surprised i mean he's put stretches of this together in training camp you know and so um we probably didn't start the season quite as hot as we wanted to but this is this is really what we we expected going into the year you feel 
Like, used to Saint just producing, right? It's just become accustomed. But I think he's 11 yards short of 4,000. I think that'll give him 350 catches, 4,000 yards, and 25 touchdowns in his first four seasons. I think he's only four guys in the league that have ever done that. Just how important is he to the over, to just overall what you guys do offensively? He, I was thinking about that earlier um, this week. Is he might be the most consistent player I've ever been around. Um, just bringing the same mentality into work every day. Uh, you know what you're going to get out on the practice field. There, there's really, particularly with that position group, there tends to be some mood swings at times. And, and he just, he hasn't had that ever since he stepped into the building. And so the consistency that he approaches the game with in preparation carries over to game day. And that's why he's been such a reliable, productive player for us. Um, and to know that, uh, I mean, that, that catch he had in the fourth quarter uh, with Harrison coming right down and trying to punch through the pocket, I mean, that's, that's a hell of a catch that, that certainly hasn't gotten the recognition that it should because that really won the game for us, got us into, into a good chip shot there for our kicker. And uh, not many guys can make that type of play with a guy draped on your back and going through. He's strong. He's physical. Um, he's really everything, everything we could hope for. Jared, do you feel like his ability to, to find answers in adversity and, and then execute them has, has improved over your time here at all? Uh, I'm sure the comfort level has gone up with us being together for as long. Um, he knows what each play really, the, what we're looking for. And so if we don't get that, I think he's quicker to say, hey, here's my number two option. or I need to get the ball down to the back right away. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to think his, his – uh, his play speed has increased a little bit just because of the number of reps we've accumulated. You mentioned Raymond in your opening comments. It felt like all four of his routes really gave Jared a, a great look in that game. When you face the, the possibility here of, of being without Jamison, um, you know, how much comfort level do you have, not just with, through the history, but you know, even with this game and what Raymond can kind of give you to help fill that void? Well, he, he, uh, he's another guy that along the same lines as Saint, you, you know what you're getting each and every day. He comes in with a great attitude, and he's willing to do whatever it takes. If you, if you told him, hey, you're going to have 10 snaps this week and they're all run blocking, he's going he's gonna to attack that with a vigor. And he, he, lo he just loves playing football and being out on the field for his teammates. And so um, when you combine that mentality along with he's got – probably the best press releases on the team because of how small and shifty he is. Guys can't keep up with his quickness. Um, he's a threat in man-to-man, -man, and then his run after catch is that of what you'd expect from a punt returner. So a very dynamic weapon. Um, there were some games earlier in the year didn't feel like was giving him enough opportunities, and so the last couple of weeks we've been able to get the ball in his hands, and he's, he's uh, taken it and ran with it. What have you seen in, in terms of his progression throughout practice? Man, it, that's that's the fun part. Um, I think when you're coaching is seeing, <laughs> yeah, you're you're tuned into the opponent at hand and and what the starters and and everything that they have going on. But you have fun when the the defense is in their preparation and you are just watching our scout team. And he's been the guy that pops every week on scout team. And I know he's won scout team player of the week several times for for Coach Glenn and the defensive staff. Um, and so you see it, you see um, what you saw in the preseason with the speed, the explosion, and now it's just carrying over and you're seeing it day in and day out. And so the trust level's certainly going up. Um, if he's up here this week, then, then uh, we're getting more confidence in, in what he'll bring to the table as well. Uh, both you and uh, Dan have mentioned that Frank's performance on Sunday might have been his best <laughs> under this regime. Um, just curious, how much of his success, particularly in the game against a team like Minnesota, is predicated on pre-snap versus post-snap? Yeah. yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's, uh, uh, I would say the post-snap aspect of it, that particular game, Harrison um, Phillips has had, had his number a little bit. He's given us some trouble over the last, last year. So uh, for him to have as much production he had after the snap was certainly a positive but no one no one appreciates what he does before the snap more than me because <laughs> it's a lot particularly a game like that where we could have had any variety of looks um 
Coach Flores, as you know, he'd, he'd give us any personnel group and pressure from every angle. And Frank did a heck of a job deciphering it. Um, on the road, loud, he, he was able to communicate, and, uh, and we really didn't miss a beat. You know, I don't think we were close to having to delay a game the whole time, and that's, that's a big credit to him. The unique abilities of, of Panay and just the things you can do. With the last two games, he's had these blocks, uh, Dallas and um, against Minnesota, where he's blocking one guy and peels off and blocks the second guy and, and gives you guys an opportunity to, to make those plays. How how rare is is that ability? How unique is that ability for an offensive lineman to execute uh, a second block within a play? Uh, Extremely. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's what we call a generational player for a reason. Um, it's really is what Brad identified, Dan identified when he was coming out of Oregon, and uh, he just keeps getting better. I mean, how old is he now? 23, 24. I mean, he, he just he keeps growing. I mean, there's – heck, you saw him throw the ball last week in, uh, in practice, didn't you? As we're getting warmed up. And, oh, yeah, you're not allowed to comment on that, but, I mean, there's <laughs> – Maybe we'll find out soon enough then. But, no, he, he can uh, – there, there's really nothing he can't do. There's really nothing he can't do. Just to keep, keep it on the O-line then, uh, you had Coyote step up. Um, obviously, the, there was a couple of weeks ago where Frank missed and you had to move Graham to, to center. So how valuable is it to have those two guards who really can just play anywhere on that interior, kind of plug and play a little bit? Yeah, no, I, I think Coach Fraley preaches it. Um, from the springtime to training camp, those guys know uh, over the course of the last two and a half years since I've been coordinating, it doesn't matter if you're if you're in the top five to start the year. If you're active anywhere from lineman six to nine, chances are you're going to see some time. And so they prepare for it. Um, we got guys working both sides all the time constantly, so they should be comfortable with it at this point. And, uh, and uh, the way Hank trains those guys, I don't think that they, they bat an eye when their number's called. Thank you. Thank you.